Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly channel. My name is John, and today I'm gonna to help you assemble your eight by seven and a half foot outdoor shed. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. The shed will come on a pallet in two big boxes. Let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get started, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, a 3 8 wrench, an adjustable wrench, a rubber mallet, a box cutter, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, a ladder, a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware a 5 16 wood drill bit, and a 5 16 masonry drill bit. To make this easier, we're going to use a socket adapter, a 7 16 socket, a 3 8 socket, vice grips, and a Phillips bit. It's crucial that you refer to your assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Hacer clic en la esquina inferior derecha de este video para ver los subtítulos en español. All lifetime sheds require a platform. We recommend building one out of concrete, but you can also build one out of lumber. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation, so it's important that you refer to your assembly manual to review section one to see how to properly build the foundation of your shed. Slide the connector onto one end of two of the trusses, making sure the holes line up. Secure the connector to the trusses with the hardware. Tighten the hardware, but make sure not to over tighten because the cap nuts could break. Slide the truss brace onto the trusses, line up the holes, and then secure with the hardware. When adding this hardware, make sure the bolts go from the inside out. To make tightening this hardware easier, I like to put a Phillips bit inside some vice grips. Slide the truss rod through the connector and the truss brace and then secure with the hardware. Repeat the previous steps to complete another truss assembly.
there are two sets of gables, but they will come in four pieces. We're going to start with the gable that has a straight edge at the bottom. Align the gables in the middle and secure with the hardware. Align the holes in the screen with the holes in the back of the vent. Place the vent and screen on the front side of the gable. Line up the holes and secure with the hardware. There are two square tubes. For this gable, we're going to be using the tube that doesn't have the two circular holes in the middle. Start by inserting one cap onto each end of the pole. Align the holes on the square tube with the divots on the gable, making sure that the dimples are facing down. Similar to the other gable, align the holes in the center and secure with the hardware. Using the same method as before, align the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent and secure to the gable. Add the caps into each end of the square tube. Align the holes in the square tube with the divots in the gable, making sure that the dimpled side is going down and that the square dimpled hole is closer to the curved side of the gable. Secure the square tube to the gable through the center two holes. Secure the square tube to the gable through the remaining holes. Insert a long tube into the square hole at the bottom of the left door. The left door is the one with the Lifetime logo. Make sure that the end with the circle hole goes in first and is on the same side as the Lifetime logo. Leave a couple inches of the tube hanging out the bottom. Insert the cap into the bottom of the tube and then finish inserting the tube until it's flush with the bottom of the door. Attach the last bracket to the left door with the hardware, only finger tighten for now. On the back of the door, on the same edge as the latch, you'll notice two divots at the bottom and two divots at the top. Drill those out with the provided drill bit. You will be drilling through the first layer of metal in the underlying tube. 
Make sure your drill is fully charged and on the highest torque setting. At the bottom of the door, place your spacer over the holes we drilled out previous, making sure you can read the word down. Then add your lock labeled two and secure with the hardware. At the top of the door, repeat the previous steps, making sure you can read the word up on your spacer and you're using the lock labeled number one. Place the two halves of the handle together and secure to the door. Insert the hinge tube into the top of the door until a few inches hangs out. On the back of the door, you'll see this groove around the window. Insert the Buell tape into the groove all the way around the window. Fill the plastic film from both sides of the window. Lay the window over the butyl tape, making sure that the holes in the window line up with the divots on the door. Secure the window to the door with the screws. Using the same method as before, insert a long tube into the bottom of the right door, making sure to leave a couple of inches out. Add the cap to the bottom of the tube and then insert the tube until it's flush with the bottom of the door. Secure the tube in the door through this divot with a self-tapping screw. Secure the latch to the door with the hardware. Connect the two halves of the handle together. Then screw the handle to the door, making sure to add the bracket on the back side. Insert the hinge tube using the same method as before and make sure to leave a couple inches out. Attach this window using the exact same method as before.
Interlock the tabs on the inner floor panel with the tabs on the outer floor panel. Attach the outer floor panel to the other side of the inner floor panel using the same method as before. You'll notice these circular holes on either side of the outer floor panels. These are for the bushings for the doors. You can put your door on either side. We're going to put our door on this side. Secure the floor panels together through the divots on the same edge as the interlocking tabs. On all five wall panels, insert the wall support into the channel just to the left of the cutout at the top. Line up the holes in the wall supports with the divots on the wall and then secure with the hardware. On the window panel, insert the short wall support into the center channel, making sure the holes line up with the divots. Secure with the hardware, you will need to insert this hardware at an angle. On your corner wall panel labeled AGY, insert your wall support into the channel on the right edge. When you do this, make sure that the end with the two holes that are close together are at the top. Line up the holes and secure with the hardware. On the corner wall panel labeled AGN, insert your wall support into the channel on the left edge. When you do this, make sure that the end with the two holes closer together are at the bottom. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGY and insert the tabs at the bottom into the two cutouts to the right of the bushing. Tap the wall panel over to lock it into place. It's easy for me to kick the wall panels over using my foot. If you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and use a block of wood and a rubber mallet. Bend the panel and then insert the tabs into the cutouts at the bottom and then apply downward pressure until they lock into place. Take a wall panel labeled AHD and insert the tabs at the bottom into the cutouts and slide it to the right to lock it into place. Add another wall panel labeled AHD using the same method as the first. Align the holes in the wall panels and secure them together with the hardware.
Add the corner panel labeled AGW using the same method as the first corner panel. Secure the corner wall panel to the neighboring wall panel with the hardware. Add two wall panels labeled AHD using the same method as the other wall panels. Insert the corner panel labeled AGL to this corner using the same method as the other corners. Add the window panel and another panel labeled AHD using the same method as before. Add the final corner panel labeled AGN to this corner using the same method as the other corners. Your shelf is going to go on the back wall. There are three height settings that you can choose from. Decide how high you want your shelf and insert the brackets at the same location on the wall supports. Grab your shelf and fold the flaps on the ends up and then when you go to place your shelf on the brackets, make sure that the notches are against the wall. Secure the shelf to the brackets and to the corner wall panels. Take the left door and insert the hinge tube into the bushing, making sure that the slits in the bushing line up with the holes in the hinge tube. Insert the cotter pin into the bushing and hinge tube and then fold the ends to lock it into place. Repeat the previous step for the right door. Slide the gable with the curve in it over the two hinge tubes. Line up the holes in the gable with the divots on the wall panel and then secure with the hardware. Attach the gap flap to these holes, making sure it's oriented like this. Leave them loose because when you go to adjust the doors at the end, you'll have to adjust the gap flaps.
Take a truss and insert it into the top of the wall panels in the cutout. Slide the edge of the roof panel into the truss and over the gable. You'll know the panel is in the correct position when the alignment nub is in this notch. Secure the bottom of the roof panel to the wall panel through these four holes. Secure the roof to these two holes in the gable and then add your roof support. Finish securing the roof panel through the five remaining holes. Install another roof panel on the opposite side using the exact same method as before. Add another truss and two roof panels using the exact same method as the previous roof panels. Slide the rear gable over the back wall, line up the holes, and secure with the hardware. Add the final two roof panels using the same method as before. Add the small roof cap to the front of the shed and secure it to the gable. Add another roof cap and secure it to the truss and roof panels. Add another roof cap using the same method as before.
add the final roof cap and secure to the gable and the roof. Fold the skylights in half and then place them on the outside of the shed and secure with the hardware. Place the wall hooks in the cutouts throughout the shed. Peel the film off the front and back of the window. Place the window in the window frame, making sure the tab is at the top and towards you. Insert the screw in the hole at the bottom of the window. Attach the latches at the top of the window through the divots, making sure they can move freely. If you notice the doors are uneven after you've finished assembling the shed, follow this link to see how to properly align the doors. Section 14 will go over how to properly anchor the shed to the foundation. Since we're inside, we're not going to be able to do that, but it's important that you do. So refer to the manual to see how to properly anchor your shed. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime eight by seven and a half foot outdoor shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.